Oh, ready for those, welcome in. So in today's video, we are going to talk about all the tests you need to do for zero evidence gameplay. So this is gonna be a zero evidence guide. So let's throw all the evidence pieces into the trash. We don't need them, we'll accept the video camera, but we'll get to that later. These dunzos, we are just gonna be figuring out ghosts based off their behavior today. So we're gonna go through all the tests needed to figure out the ghosts. Um, I'm on a custom difficulty where I have infinite sprint just to make things a little bit faster and that way I can also loop the ghost as long as possible to show you these tests. I also have access to my sanity monitor. I'm starting out at 100% sanity um, and we have access to the activity monitor, although we're never going to get EMF5 because I have zero evidence as a modifier. Um, so we're going to go inside the house, um, keep it on our sanity because if the ghost happens to hunt early, uh, it could be an early hunting ghost, which we'll talk about in a little bit, but we're going to do all the tests that you can do before the ghost hunts. So first things first, we are going to go find the ghost room and put down salt. So there is one ghost that absolutely will never step in the salt and that is the wraith. So if you put down salt, you're 100% sure it's in the ghost room. Like the ghost is in that room, never steps in the salt. That's gonna mean it's a wraith. So let's go find the ghost room and put down some salt. Um, obviously I'm gonna be doing this video with like one or two ghosts. So I'm not gonna be able to like, none of these ghosts are gonna do all the ghost abilities unless I somehow get a mimic. But I do have footage of what all the ghost abilities look like. So if we happen to not get that ghost, I will show a clip of what the ability looks like. Okay, so I think I'm actually gonna go ahead and use the mirror, which is gonna drop my sanity a little bit. Okay, you're in the bathroom. It's actually perfect. Okay, so let's go ahead and put some salt in there. Okay, that. Okay, that right there is super important. So that is called an airball ghost event. There is one ghost that is incapable of doing that, and that's the Oni. So if you ever get an airball ghost event like that, you can immediately roll off Oni. Okay, we were putting down salt though. <laughs> so I'm just gonna put some salt right there, maybe out here. Um, wait, I'm just using the thermometer to double check that the ghost is in this room, which it probably is. The house just needs to like get cold, or maybe it's not in this room. But we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Um, let's go back out and get some more evidence pieces. No, sorry. Let's go back out and get some more things to test for the ghost with. So our sanity is down to 70% now. So if it was an early hunting ghost, it probably would hunt by now. All the early hunting ghosts include the demon, which, which can hunt you at 70% sanity. It has a rare chance to hunt you at any sanity. So you could walk in the house and it could hunt you as soon as you walk inside the door, if it's a demon. Um, another early hunting ghost is the Thay that can hunt you at 75% sanity when you first start the contract. Another early hunting ghost is the Yokai, which can hunt you at 80% sanity if you are talking near it. Um, another early hunting ghost is the Onryo, which can hunt you at any percent sanity if it happens to blow out three candles in a row. Another early hunter is the Raiju, which can hunt you at 65% sanity if you are nearby active electronic equipment. Another early hunter is the Mare, which can hunt you at 60% sanity if it is in the dark. Something you can use the activity board for is to look for twins. The twins are ghosts that are capable of doing two interactions at one time. And when they do, they'll leave like this kind of curved line. It's really hard to explain. We could try to look out for that in case it's twins. Um, I'm not seeing it right now, but if I do, I'll let you know. That is something else you can look out for. Okay. So another ghost, drop that salt. Um, another ghost we can start setting up for now is the Onryo. So the way the Onryo works, is that they hate candles. They cannot hunt within four meters of a lit candle. So to test for an Onryo, you go to the ghost room and you put down crucifixes and candles. Okay, so this ghost did step in the salt. Sorry, let me pause real quick. It did step in the salt so we can rule out Wraith as a ghost. Um, so to test for an Onryo, I usually put crucifixes kind of near the ghost room. Maybe we'll put one right out here. If you didn't know, you can press and hold F to see the radius of the crucifix while you're placing it. And they're gonna put a candle on each crucifix. And if we ever see the ghost use a crucifix while the candle is still lit, we can rule out Onryo. So let me go get a lighter to light those up. So I did say that we were gonna throw out all the evidence pieces, but there's actually one trick that we can do with the EMF reader to test for the Jin. So the Jin, um, when it uses its ability, it has a couple different abilities. By the way, I have a complete ghost abilities guide that I can link in the description below. Um, I'm not gonna go in depth about each ghost ability. This is this video is mostly oh okay. Hello there. Um, this video is just mostly about the tests that we can do to test for the ghost. 
But the gin has the ability where it can choose to train your sanity. And when it does that, it'll leave a random EMF2 at the breaker. And unfortunately, the breaker is all the way down in Narnia. So if it does do its ability, I'm not sure if we're going to hear it. But we'll go ahead and put a breaker down here just in case. Okay. So our sanity should be close to hunting threshold for most ghosts. Most ghosts will hunt you at 50% sanity. Let me see. What's our sanity at? Okay. Our sanity is almost down to hunting threshold so most ghosts should be able to hunt us by now um let's get a couple other things let's see i'm gonna keep a picture camera on me um until so just in case it is a ghost event again because there's one ghost another ghost that you can rule out before it ever hunts which is a phantom if you take a picture of a ghost and it disappears like while it's ghost eventing and the ghost event continues and you also go to look in your journal and there's no ghost there it's gonna be a phantom but if we take a picture of the ghost and the ghost doesn't disappear from the ghost event and the ghost is in the picture, we can rule out Phantom. It may hunt before then, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. So another test we can do while we're waiting for the ghost to hunt, which actually I need to light these candles. Uh, we can test for a Banshee. So a Banshee on single player. Here we go. Um, okay, so not a, not a Phantom. My sanity should be, okay, I'm about to say, my sanity should be really low right now. I'm just gonna loop this ghost and then we'll talk about what I was looking for. Actually, I'll tell you right now. Um, so while you're looping the ghost, a couple things you can look for is its blink. So you're looking to see if it's as a normal blink, a pretty um, pretty visible blink, if it's like has a very long blink, which could mean that it's a phantom. You're also looking to see if the ghost can shapeshift, which could mean that it's an obake. Obake is capable of shapeshifting, which this ghost had a very normal blink in my opinion. Um, so phantom would have had a very long blink it would have been like almost invisible to see so we're going to cross off phantom this ghost isn't a phantom but this is what a phantom would look like while it's hunting we already know this ghost isn't an oni because it did an airball ghost event but also an oni during a hunt would have a very visible blink and this is what that would look like and we also know this ghost is not an obake because it never shapeshifted its ghost models this is what it looks like when obake shapeshifts its ghost model during a hunt I was gonna go outside and get a smudge stick, but we'll go and loop this ghost again, I guess. Another thing to pay attention to while you're looping the ghost is to see if it's gradually speeding up with line of sight. Like this ghost definitely seems like it's gradually getting faster while I'm looping it. A couple ghosts that don't do this are the uh, Thay and Hauntu. Thays and Hauntus will not gradually speed up with line of sight. Okay, there we go. Let's go ahead and hop out here and take a look at our sanity. Okay, yeah, our sanity is definitely low enough to continue to get hunted. I do need to be keeping those candles lit. I may also move the candles and crucifix into the kitchen because it seems like it's hunting more in the kitchen. And so I need to be testing for Onryo that way. But let's talk about some more of the ghosts that it can be. Um, so this ghost, whenever it first initiates its hunt, it has a very normal speed. So to test if the ghost has a normal speed, you can sing the song, This is the rhythm of the night. And if the footsteps like match up to that, the beat of that song, then it's going to be a normal speeded ghost. And when this ghost first starts hunting, it does have that normal speed. And it's also increasing with speed while we're looping it. So ghosts I'm going to cross off based off that are going to be... Um, actually, what's our sanity at? I'm going to wait to cross off Maroi because the way the Maroi works is that the lower your sanity, the faster the ghost will be. Because our sanity isn't at zero yet, I'm not sure if... Um, this could still be a Maroi. We just might need to let our sanity drain a little bit more. So I'm going to wait on Maroi. But this is not a revenant because a revenant would be very slow when it first starts hunting and then goes super cyan speed. So this is what a revenant looks like. Mm -hmm. 
this ghost is not a haunt to because it is gradually speeding up with line of sight and it's also not like super fast in its ghost room where it's colder because haunt twos are fastest in cold temperatures and then they slow down in warmer temperatures and i'm pretty sure this this kitchen is its ghost room and it's not very fast it's also speeding up with line of sight which haunt twos do not do so i'm gonna cross off haunt two but this is what a haunt two would look like Another Hantu ability is that when the breaker is off, you can see it's freezing breath in any room in the house. So you could alternatively test for a Hantu by turning off the breaker and looping the ghost and seeing if you can see its breath. This ghost is also not a Diogen because the way the Diogen works is that you cannot hide from this ghost. If you try to hide, it's going to be really, really fast to get to you. And then when it gets close to you, it's going to go down to like a slow pace and it's going to grab you out of the closet. Even if you're like super well hidden, it's going to grab you. So this ghost is not a Diogen, but this is what a Diogen does look like. Uh, this ghost is also not a Thay, because a Thay is an early hunter. They will hunt you at 75% sanity, um, and this ghost waited till like right around 50% sanity to hunt us. So I know this isn't a Thay because of that. Also, it's gradually speeding up with line of sight, which Thays are not able to do. And it's also a normal speeded ghost. A Thay would be very, very fast at the beginning of the contract. And every few minutes that you're near a Thay, it ages and gets progressively slower and less aggressive. And this ghost speed hasn't changed at all. So we're going to cross off Thay, but this is what a Thay would look like. The Thay is also the only ghost in this game that will change its age on a Ouija board. So if you happen to have access to a Ouija board in your game, you can ask the ghost at the beginning of the contract what its age is. And then after aging the ghost for several minutes, you can go back and ask what its age is. And if it is a Thay, the age should go up. Okay, so now we have a few other tests that we can do. Um, let's see, let's go ahead and set up for a Yokai and Miling test. Let's see, we'll drop that. Drop that for now. This ghost turned oh okay, actually that's actually really good for us. So this ghost turned off the breaker. Oh, it just uses crucifix. Hold on, you get these candles lit. Um so there's one ghost that is completely incapable of turning off the breaker, and that is the gin. Um another way to test for the gin is that you want to get into a like long corridor. So say like right here, if the ghost were to come out of that bathroom, what you're looking for when the breaker is on is that the ghost is going to get a little bit of a pep in step. It's gonna speed up when it sees you. And then when it gets close to you, it's going to go back down to normal speed. Um, so this is what... Oh, I'm going to go and hide. I'm going to go and hide while we talk about this. So yeah, this is what a gin test looks like. And you could also do a reverse gin test. You could turn off the breaker and see if the ghost doesn't like get a speed up when it rounds the corner and sees you. I'm also gonna cross off shade because the way the shade works is that it's a very shy ghost. It will not hunt in the same room as you. And this ghost is bullying me. But this ghost has been consistently hunting, like, pretty much in the kitchen with me. Shades will not be able to do this. The shade will have to step right outside of the room that you're in to hunt you. It's also been pretty active doing ghost events. Shades will still do ghost events, but they'll typically be like airball ghost events and non-invisible ghost events. So I am going to cross off shade. But if you're ever going against a ghost and it's like super boring, won't hunt in the same room as you, it's hardly doing anything, your sanity is low enough like for it to hunt and whatnot, it's probably a shade. Okay, so I do want to make sure that I am keeping these candles and crucifixes lit. I'm going to move this crucifix to the kitchen. Okay, just kidding. We're going to get hunted because this ghost likes to bully me. So the breaker is still off. I forgot about that part. <laughs> okay, so we're moving everything into this kitchen. It does seem like... 
I don't know exactly where to put this crucifix because I do it, it is hunting from this bathroom but not a lot um let's go ahead and turn the breaker back on so that we can see and then we're gonna try to keep an eye on the crucifixes and candles because it has yet to use a crucifix with the candle being lit which is super interesting another thing about onrios is that they like to wander away from candles to try and hunt so if this is an onrio what it might be doing right now is trying to wander away from the candle so what we could do this ghost just hunted from the basement where i just was that's actually super interesting i don't know if it just wandered all the way down there to get like maybe get away from the candles but we may need to test that. Okay, so this is what a normal speeded ghost looks like or sounds like. Um, so you hunted from the basement. That's super interesting. Um, okay. I'm gonna go ahead and get some more candles to try and make a better perimeter of candles. Because even if there's no crucifixes on the candles, the Onryo is still unable to hunt because there is a candle nearby. Okay, so we have a pretty good perimeter of candles right now. Um, if it is an Onryo and it hunts in any of these areas, okay, well, I'll just turn off the breaker again. So, rip the breaker. Um, I'll be pretty confident that it is not an Onryo if it hunts up here. Um, but if it continues to hunt in the basement, we'll go ahead and move everything down there. Um, another ghost I want to go ahead and cross off are the twins. So with the twins, uh, like I mentioned earlier, you can maybe notice the ghost doing like tuner actions at one time. It might throw a plate and then also touch a door. Um, and you'll see kind of like a weird curvy wonky looking um, thing on the, the activity board. I'll go and show that now. Um, but another thing you're looking for while they're hunting is that the ghost is going to be either slightly slower or slightly faster than normal. And they only send out one ghost at a time, but this ghost will either be slightly slower or slightly faster. And it's not always going to be slow fast slow fast like each hunt's not going to be like a different speed sometimes let's send out the slow twin two or three hunts in a row and these this is what these slow and fast twins sound like also this ghost keeps hunting from the basement so we are gonna probably move operations down there. Another ghost I wanna go ahead and cross off because of this is the Goryeo. The main tell for the Goryeo on, actually the only tell for a Goryeo on Zero Evidence is that it will never change its favorite room. So this ghost definitely seems like it's changed its favorite room. So I wanna go ahead and rule off Goryeo. Yeah, the fact that this ghost has changed its favorite room makes me very, like it's interesting, right? because there's certain ghosts that like to wander away and change their favorite room based off certain situations, I should guess. Um, so uh, the mare absolutely hates the light. Okay, we just hunted down there and I wasn't fully set up. Um, we actually could go ahead and do a miling test really quick as well. Um, but yeah, the mare hates the light. And so if you have a lights on in its ghost room, sometimes it'll wander away from the light and change its room. All right, so this ghost is not a myling, um, and I know that because mylings are super quiet while they're hunting. Um, to do a te 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 <clears throat> to test for a myling, you can go to a hiding spot and put your flashlight down, and if you can only hear the footsteps after your flashlight starts flickering, it's most likely a myling. But this ghost, I was able to hear to hear its footsteps before my flashlight started flickering. Therefore, I know it's not a myling. And sometimes with mylings too, you'll hear them like throwing things, touching doors, but you won't hear their footsteps. So this is what a myling sounds like. Okay, let's try to get everything moved down to the basement now. This ghost is a meanie and it's moved operations. It hasn't, oh, okay, never mind. We're gonna stop doing that. So this ghost did use this crucifix while the candle is still lit. 
So we can definitely rule out Onryo, and Onryo would have had to have blown out that candle before using this crucifix. So, that is a ghost event. Okay. Did you just turn on a light? Hold on. I'm gonna go check something while this ghost is hunting. It kind of sounded like this ghost turned on a light. Okay, so this ghost turned on this light. That means that it cannot be a mare. Mares aren't capable of turning on the lights. I haven't turned this thing on. So that is one tell for a mare. If you ever see a ghost turn on a light, it cannot be a mare. But now you just broke a light, which is another... Mares are more likely to do light-breaking ghost events. It's not an immediate tell that it's a mare. They're just more likely to do it. But we already know this ghost is not a mare because it turned on a light. Um, another tell for a mare is that it can hunt you at 60% sanity if you're in the dark and 40% sanity if you're in the light. So if you ever notice a ghost hunts early... Okay, you just did two light-breaking ghost events. What the heck? You are so strange. And it just turned off the breaker again. This ghost is bullying me. Holy cow. Now it's gonna haunt me. Okay, another test we need to do, actually, is that we need to set a smudge timer. So we're gonna loop the ghost and smudge it, and we're gonna set a timer right as soon as our smudge stick stops burning. And we're gonna see if this ghost, um, when this ghost hunts again, based on how long after we smudged it, if this ghost even comes upstairs. I'm just gonna go and smudge. Oh, okay. Just kidding. Okay. <laughs> okay, we'll go and try to smudge her outside of a hunt. Like if she touches a door or something, we'll smudge it. And I'm gonna set a smudge timer. A demon can hunt you after 60 seconds after you smudge them. A spirit will have to wait three minutes. And then every other ghost can hunt you after 90 seconds. So um, I just need to see this ghost do something or I'll do it during a hunt. Yeah, the ghost just turned on this light again. Actually did get managed to get my um, I'm gonna just smudge this whole basement and we'll set a smudge timer. Hopefully that will do something. I mean, it's very active down here. Okay. I did manage to get my smudge timer going before that happened. And this is not the gin ability because first of all, we know it's not a gin. Second of all, it tried to turn off the breaker. So that's why. Okay. So we're gonna sit here and see when the ghost hunts again and go from there. Um, another ability we're looking for is the Yuri ability. So the way the Yuri works is that it has an ability to drain your sanity by 15%. And when it does this, it will fully slam a door. Um, you'll see the door go from fully open to shut. Sometimes it'll also like double touch a door in quick succession. It's kind of hard to see, kind of hard to hear, but that is one of their capabilities. So we're going to be tipping. Okay, that is not the Yuri ability right there. That is just a ghost event. So if the ghost says that, that does not mean it's a Yuri. It just means that it's ghost eventing they when they when the ghost ghost event they usually touch a door or turn off a light so yeah i thought the ghost turned off the breaker again this ghost has turned off the breaker like five times there is one ghost we haven't looked for yet which is the mimic we'll look for that in a little bit the main tell for a mimic on zero evidence is that it will have ghost orbs it is the only ghost on zero evidence that will have evidence which is ghost orbs also you may notice the ghost might change its behavior while it's hunting or you know like it might get like faster or slower in different for different in different hunts. Uh, that's probably means it's a mimic. But we will check for orbs in a little bit. I'm just trying to get through all these tests first. Okay, so that was like right on the cusp of 90 seconds right there. So um, sometimes demons will do that. That they'll wait. So I usually like to do a couple smudge timers just to make sure it's not a demon. But we know for sure this ghost is not a spirit because it would have had to wait three minutes to hunt us. Another good tell for a demon is that they have an increased range on the crucifix of five meters instead of three meters. So like when you put down the crucifix, that's a three meter range. It's going to be an even bigger range. So you can kind of, kind of put a crucifix somewhere. And if the ghost is just like super easily using the crucifix, that could mean it's a demon. Um, I was looking at the door to see if it was a Yuri ability. Uh, so we still need to test for a yokai. Uh, I'm pretty sure this ghost is not a Raiju because it's not speeding up around our flashlight and our electronical equipment. So I am going to rule off Raiju, but this is what a Raiju would look like. Uh, 
And I'm pretty sure at this point our sanity is at zero. So uh, the Mori would be faster. It would be a pretty fast ghost by now while it's hunting and still staying normal speed. So I am going to roll off Maroi, but this is what a Maroi at zero sanity would sound like. Another ability for the Maroi is that the smudge blindness effect lasts twice as long for Maroi's. So instead of blinding the ghost for six seconds, a Maroi will be blinded for 12 seconds after you smudge them. So if you smudge a ghost that is fast and it seems to ignore you for a very long time, this could also mean it's a Maroi. So right now I'm just looking to see if this ghost like really easily uses this crucifix. It does really enjoy that door down there. Okay, that is kind of interesting, but I mean, it could just be a normal ghost that happened to hunt within the range of the crucifix. This ghost is bullying me. <laughs> I'm like a super fast speed, so I feel pretty confident just running away. Um, I'm not sure if that was, I feel like that was within a five meter range of the crucifix. So I do want to roll off demon because it hunted relatively close to that crucifix, um, but definitely outside the three meter range. Um, but we'll definitely keep setting smudge timers just in case it happens to be a demon. Okay, so another ghost we want to test for is a yokai. The way the yokai works is that it does not detect your electronical equipment or your voice from farther than 2.5 meters away. And actually Willow Street is one of the best ways to test for this. Uh, you can just stand behind this door with a smudge stick and see if the ghost ever goes for you. If the ghost comes upstairs and walks right by you and like goes into the garage, then it's most likely a yokai. Because a yokai will not sense your equipment from this distance. Ghosty, come here. Okay, this ghost is like beelining it for us. So I'm pretty confident. It's not a yokai, um, but I'll go and show you footage of what a yokai would look like. Time to do the um, yokai test. Step one, insert face into door. Step two, wait for a ghost to hunt. Step three, hope it doesn't find you. Any questions? Here we go. Frank? 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 I'm right here. <laughs> Come back. Okay, so I do have another smudge timer going just in case it happens to somehow be a demon. Um, I also want to try to go ahead and pinpoint this ghost room. Are you just like in this hallway? I think this ghost is just like in this hallway down here. Okay, still paying attention to the doors in case it's gonna be a Yuri. Yeah, I think it's just in the hallway. I'm trying to remember where I left my paramic. I'm so bad about this. I'm so bad about remembering where I left my equipment. Maybe down in the basement? Or maybe I left it in the van. I'm just staying inside to see when it hunts again in case it might somehow be a demon, but it's not really looking like a demon. I think I am gonna go ahead and cross off demon because it has been consistently hunting after 90 seconds after I smudge it. So yeah, we already had demon crossed off. We're gonna cross demon off. Oh, I'm gonna stop that timer as well. Yeah, I did leave my paramic in here, okay. So another ghost we're going to test for is the Banshee on single player. The best way to, to identify a Banshee is to look at the ghost room with a paramic and see if you ever get a Banshee scream. This is this is what the Banshee scream will sound like. Sometimes that can take a while to get though. So if you've been sitting there for a while and you're not getting a Banshee scream and you still want to test Oh, that was a ghost event, okay. And you still wanna test for a banshee, what you can do is you can kinda of go far away from the ghost room. Like say the garage would be a good place in this situation. Um, and see if the ghost ever comes up here. Okay, the ghost is hunting. And see if the ghost ever comes up here and like this ghost events on you, hunts on top of you, uses a crucifix maybe. Cause banshees, what they do is they pick your target and because you're in single player, they will pick you <laughs> and they will follow you around. Like they have a ghost room, but they're gonna be following you around and, and trying to hunt on you and stuff. So if you, it seems like the ghost is hunting on you super far away from the ghost room, it, it this could definitely be a banshee. The only other ghost it could be in that instance would be a wraith or a phantom, and I've already talked about how to test for those. The wraith and the phantom are the only other ghosts besides a banshee that have like a teleport or wandering ability. The wraith can choose a player and teleport to them. 
And when they do this, they'll give you random EMF too. So another way to test for a wraith is to hold an EMF reader and be far away from the ghost room and see if while you're standing there, you ever get a random EMF two reading. The phantom has an ability to wander. It'll pick a player and wander to them. This doesn't give you a random EMF two, but if for some reason you're far away from the ghost room and the ghost is following you around and maybe even like changes ghost room to where you are, this could also mean it's a phantom. If you're on multiplayer, you could do a banshee test where you have each person individually like stand out during a hunt and see if at any point the ghost ignores a player because the banshee only targets one person and will only kill that one person during a hunt. So as long as that one target is inside the house during a hunt, all three other players can stand out and the ghost will completely ignore them. So because this ghost never seems to like be coming upstairs and trying to interact with me up here, it's just kind of staying down in the basement. I'm gonna roll off Banshee. I'm not gonna sit here and try to get a paramic response for a year. <laughs> We're gonna roll off Banshee. So this leaves us with just three ghosts left that I still need to show tests for. Um, so let's go ahead and grab a video camera. We will go ahead and go down there and check for orbs. See if somehow this might be a mimic. As far as I can tell, it has not changed its speed during a hunt, but you can also, a mimic could just be mimicking like all the normal speeded ghosts. So you would like, it'd be really, really hard to tell that it's a mimic. So let's go check for orbs just in case. Okay, so if this hallway is your ghost room, I'm not seeing any orbs. All right, so I'm gonna go and roll off Mimic because a Mimic on zero evidence, you would still see ghost orbs in his ghost room. So we are gonna go and roll off Mimic. So that just leaves us with Poltergeist and Yuri. I've yet to show how to like see if the ghost is a Poltergeist or not. And we'll go and do that next hunt. So there's a couple different ways that you can test for a Poltergeist, either inside or outside of a hunt. Let me turn on the breaker really quick. Um, outside of a hunt, you could set up a pile of items in the ghost room and see if the ghost ever does a pile explosion like this. Um, alternatively, if you want to check during a hunt, what you can do is put a bunch of items. Sorry also if you can hear my dogs woofing in the background. Um, but you can set a pile of items on like a loopable surface and see how the ghost throws them. A poltergeist will absolutely yeet and delete all of the items. So like every ghost is going to throw things. But what you're looking for with the poltergeist is that it's just gonna absolutely throw things like crazy. And this is what a poltergeist looks like during the hunt. So through the power of deduction, we have deduced that this ghost is a Yuri. Um, we haven't seen its ability, but I have ruled off every other ghost based off testing them. Um, I will go ahead, maybe we'll take some sanity pills and see if this ghost will give us the Yuri ability. Um, another characteristic of the Yuri is that after you smudge the, the ghost, if it is a Yuri, it gets trapped in its room for a period of time, which in this instance, it's a little difficult to test for because this whole basement is its ghost room and it doesn't really seem like it's wandering out of here. But if the ghost seems to be wandering out of its ghost room and then you smudge it and all of a sudden it seems like it's just chilling in its ghost room, then it could most likely be a Yuri. I'm gonna hold a candle just to keep our sanity up. And we'll just hang out by these doors and see if it ever slams a door. I also do have a smudge stick on me, so I may go ahead and just, actually let's check the temperatures. Okay, I definitely still seem like you're just down here. Okay, so we're just going to, oh, that wasn't a full slam. Let's go and smudge this area. And maybe that might help us get the Yuri to be more active. Oh yeah, it's immediately touching doors. Oh, that wasn't a full door slam though. It really wants to do its ability. I can tell, it really wants to. Yeah, sometimes the Yuri ability can be really frustrating because it doesn't do it very often and it might be bugged right now to not really work very well, but um, I'm gonna try to get it for you guys right now. Then it does a ghost event, makes me think it's gonna be do the Yuri ability. All right, so we're gonna use this last smudge stick to try and smudge this room and <laughs> see if maybe we can get the Yuri ability. Okay, I've sat here for a while 
This ghost is like refusing to do its eerie ability. Give me a sign. Give me a sign. Do something. Come on. Slam a door. Slam a door. Um, but go ahead and show you what the eerie ability looks like because I do have footage of that. Well, let's go and load out. Maybe somehow I did my test wrong and it's not a Yuri, but let's go and load out and see if it's just a Yuri that is super stubborn about showing its ability. But yeah, sometimes you can narrow down the ghost. You may not ever see its ability, but you may just be able to narrow down to a ghost because it, like all the other ghosts don't do their ability, I guess, like the, the process of elimination to figure out the ghost type. Okay, so the ghost was indeed a Yuri. Um, it's just a little frustrating. I think it, the, the ability was a little bugged, which is frustrating, but sometimes it's like that. So yeah, that is the complete no evidence guide and all the tests needed. Um, if you have any questions, definitely comment down below. I'm happy to answer any of them. If you like the video, drop it a like. All of this helps out with algorithms so much. Otherwise, good luck, go something, and I will see you in the next one.